Okay, unit um, one, lesson four, explore. Students will be able to solve linear formulas given uh, for a given variable. All right, so if you notice the first example has more than one variable, so it's a little intimidating, but um, what we're trying to do is kind of take a formula that's given to us and change it around um, for a different variable. So right now, this is referred to as solving for the variable p. Okay, solving means getting alone, alone on one side. Okay, so right now um, p is being solved for, and they want you to change it to looking like it's solving for n. Okay, so um, let me just do these separately so I can talk about them. So you have m plus n equals p. All right, so since this is the letter that I want to get all alone, that means this is the problem. So I want to move this to the other side by, remember, this is a positive M. So if we, um, I don't like putting a line there when it's a move. Okay, that means we're going to subtract M from both sides to get the N alone. And these are not like terms. So you can put it down like this um, or like this and you're done okay now the n is alone on one side and that means we have solved for n okay um, the next one has y equals y equals mx plus b and right now this is being solved for y we want to solve for b so b is over here which means this is the problem here you want to get rid of this entire term and move it to over here. So we're adding and subtracting to move things. So this is going to be gone on this side, and then this side will be y minus mx equals b. Done. Okay. Um, you can put the mx first. Just make sure the mx is what stays negative. All right. D equals r times t, this is distance equals rate times time, and right now it's being solved for the distance, we want to solve it for the rate. So the rate is being multiplied by uh, time, so we want to divide by time to get rid of the t's. Whatever we do to one side, we do the other side, so rate equals d over t, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you write the r first or second, but the d must be over the t. Okay, and the R must be alone. Alright, here's this problem again, y equals mx plus b, and you want to solve for m this time instead of the y. So the m is kind of buried in this term here, so that means we're going to be moving this term, the b over here, so this is going to be y minus b equals mx. Now the m isn't alone yet, so then I, this is a two-stepper. So I need to divide both sides by x. So this is what my um, final answer will look like here. Okay, make sure the b stays negative, the y stays positive, and the whole thing has to be over the x. Okay. And then we have h equals 2mn, and we need to solve for this m. The m is in a fraction. So if you want to solve it, with one step, you can multiply by its reciprocal, um, which means that I'd multiply h over 2 um, by both sides. Let's see. Oh, that's an n. Sorry. N over, n over 2. I don't like all these letters either. Um, and that would take that away and have m alone, and that means this side be multiplied by this. And remember, this h is already on the top, so however you want to put this, the h over 2. Um, the other way is a little slower. It's not in one step, it's in two steps. This is a fraction. You want to remove the fraction, multiply both sides by the denominator. So this would be hn. Um, equals 2m, and then you want to divide by the 2 to get rid of the 2 part. And then you end up with this. So either way, um, we're getting m alone on one side. Okay? So you declared the fraction, or you multiplied by the reciprocal is what you didn't want. Alright? And the, for the practice, it's just a bunch of those. 
So let's see, this one's solving for B. Um, some people like to underline or keep an eye on the, what they want. And remember, the idea is to not, believe it or not, not touch the term that you want. You want to move the other term. This is the problem term. We want to start getting B by itself. So whatever we do to one side, we do the other side. That goes away. So I typically write, um, and you'll see the text typically write the positive number first, but that's up to you as long as the Y stays positive and it's the 7X, which is negative. All right, so that leaves the 8. This negative right here belongs to that 8B, okay? So you want to keep that. So the B isn't quite alone yet. We want to divide by whatever is keeping it from being alone, and then we put that right over there. So our final answer is b equals y minus 7mx over negative 8. And you feel free to just leave it like that, uh, depending on your instructor. If your instructor wants you to simplify it, let's see, this would be b, y, this would be a negative 8, and the other one would be a double negative over 8. So that's up to your instructor. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, this one says get K alone on one side, so that means we need to add the 3W to both sides. I don't even look where what's going on on the other side. I know that I want this K by itself, which means I need to move this term. It's negative, so I'm going to add a positive 3W to both sides. That gets rid of this. That's all I really care about. And I come over here, and these are all three different terms, so I find it easiest just to stack it on the end. Um, it's a positive 3w, make sure it stays positive, and then divide by 2 to get rid of that. So this is pretty much your final answer right there. All right, this one, there's a distribution, and I'm looking for the p, which is here. So that means I gotta get it out of the parentheses. These are not like terms, so I can't add them together. So I need to distribute to get this out of the way here. So it'd be 12p plus 18x. And then I need the p by itself, so that means move this term away. I know it's odd that you keep touching the thing you don't want, but that's how these work. You peel away the terms you don't want to be alone. You move them over and then these are not like terms. Don't put them together. Make sure the 18x stays negative. Get p completely alone. So p is going to be z minus 18x over 12. All right, there's the b that I'm looking for right here. So we're going to distribute. 12a plus 2b. I need the b alone, so that means I'm moving the 12a. y minus 12a equals 2b. Got to get the b completely alone. Final answer is b equals y minus 12a over b. Okay. Uh, let's see. Solving for d, d's in a fraction. So... Just go ahead and clear the fraction by multiplying by an x. So 2x equals 5d. I think that's the easiest way. And then I'll get the d completely alone. So my answer is d equals 2x over 5. Let me get my key out here so make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. Yep. Okay, here's another one with the distribution, and the, what I'm looking for is in here. So, might as well distribute y equals 3pt and plus 18b. Okay, this is the term I want, so this is the term I'm moving. familiar. I was just wondering if I did that before. Okay, so that's that. Okay, and we're looking for the t. The t's got a couple of things being multiplied by it, so we want to remove them. Remember, the same thing over the same thing equals a 1, so that's what's
kind of removes them as in you don't see a P anymore. Whatever you do to one side, you do the other side, right? Notice that, um, just to be super clear, when we're adding and subtracting, you add and subtract to move. When we're multiplying and dividing, you multiply or divide to isolate, okay? There's a big, huge difference in that, so make sure we're getting that straight. All right, so final answer, T equals Y minus 18B over 3P, okay? Uh, solve for P. Where's the P? The P's up there. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to clear my fraction by dividing by Q, X, Q, Q, X. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order. The textbook's always going to put them in alphabetical order. I may or may not do that. I'll take it either way. Um, it's just this being multiplied by this. So 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So the order is unimportant. Clear this up. Don't forget that negative is still there, and I need the P. So when we isolate, we divide by the same so that P is alone. We don't want a negative P, so divide by negative 4, and this is just QX divided by a negative 4. Just, just leave it like that, okay? Uh, solve for A. A is right here. Uh, AX plus... Bx equals r. Still want this, so this is being moved. Ax equals r minus bx. And then I need the a. x equals r minus bx over x. Uh, that's fine for me. If your instructor wants you to reduce then that would be r over x minus b over x, and then the x's disappear, so that would be x equals r over x minus b, okay? Or that. Uh, solve for w. w is in a fraction. I think I want to move this term. Since this is not a fraction and this is not a fraction, I want to just go ahead and add 4r to both sides. Notice they're both r's too. Well, that's different. That means I can add these together. This is a 11r plus a 4r, so this is a 15r. All right, and then, um, sorry, lost my focus. Uh, what was I doing? W. I always have to go back, make sure you remember what we're going back for. There's the W. So that means I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by 3. So this is 5W equals 45R divided by 5. W equals 9R. Is that it? Yep. W oops, equals 9R. That was different. All right. This one here, I'm looking for the X, the M. Therefore, this needs to go. Oops. Yes. We're good. Just focusing on the M here. <laughs> Just making sure. It's a lot of letters. Uh, so we want to get rid of everything that isn't an M. Again, we're still touching everything that isn't what we want and peeling them away. Um, so this is going to leave the M alone, Y plus 8B over 7X. And I turn these around by habit. You can certainly put the M on this side. It does not matter. Okay? Thank you.